YouTube. Crowder here, bringing you guys what you've been asking for for such a long time. Guys, it is time for the advanced player tips. I know I've been doing some basic tips and I've been doing a bunch of coaching videos throughout the year and you guys have liked it, but I'm going to do how to win solo duos and how to get a little bit better at them and analyze one of my games that I've won recently. This was my 1000th win. This game was actually crazy. The ending was probably the best part, so please don't stop halfway through this video. Get all the way to the end. The way I win this game is actually crazy. It's a pretty wild situation, so this video is going to consist of me explaining my thoughts in the 1v2 scenarios this is a solo versus duos match and also kind of just like watching this and seeing how i play it and how i position it will help you not only win solos versus duos but solos in general so if you guys like these kind of gameplays i did how to win solos about two weeks ago and it helped out a lot so i'm going to be doing how to win solos versus duos now and kind of show you guys how to get the w when you guys are going up against more than one person at a time i hope you guys enjoy this video if you did please smash the like button comment your thoughts on this video right now as you're watching it i would love to hear from you guys I've been responding to all my YouTube comments as I can. And the recent videos have been getting so much engagement. I really appreciate it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. This is going to be a tips, video, and analyzation of the 1v2s. So get ready. Let's get right into it. And I hope you guys have a great day. All right, guys. So this video, like I said, I'm going to be analyzing it just like the how to win more solos. I'm going to do the same thing here in the how to win solo, solo duo. So we are watching the highlight of my exact VOD from Twitch of me playing a solo versus duo and getting a win with the stoner. I will provide the stoner loadout as well. If you guys want to see a really good stoner loadout at the end of the video too, uh, I've been using it. It's probably my favorite Black Ops Cold War weapon. So I'll provide that at the end too, if you guys want to see it. But that will be a brief one because this is not about the stoner exactly. This is just about kind of the inside the mind kind of thing. We're always gonna we're always gonna drop super for the most part. And usually the way I like to run super is by going through the back door of the loading dock side, which is the east side and where like my where the ping is right here i usually like landing there a lot too when you're watching me play most of the time when i'm playing solo duos if i'm like really locked in you try and get a gun and you try and get some loot right away but then you really want to end up playing the second stories i explained that in the how to win more solos uh <clears throat> more solos video too but right then and there i come up the stairs i run into two people i get sent to the gulag and now this is kind of where like this is kind of where i'm happy that i die here because when i die here i actually am forced to play a little bit more passive and it's not something where i have a lot of momentum going where i start off with like seven kills and everything's going in my favor i'm gonna actually show you guys how to like regain properly too which helps out a lot too side note as well for this gulag and also in general i really want to make a how to win more gulags in the new season with the new gulag map so if you guys like that comment below right now if you want to see that video if this gets a lot of comments about that specifically too i will make sure that i actually put that video like on a on speed dial i guess not speed dial but you know like make it really prioritized for the videos that i'm making for you because i think it would actually help out a lot this gulag is a little bit different than the last one of course so i think i can help you guys out with that too but yeah in this gulag i have the pistol i push the right side and usually he has the car this was just a really easy one nothing special so i get my first kill and now this is where I'm thinking in my mind, like I probably can't make it back to super without getting either double teamed right away or anything of the sort. So I kind of look for like a scavenger to get money right away. So I have a chance to obviously bring back my money, get some, you know, get my feet under me again, and then try to get the loadout before the new one comes so I can switch over to ghost. So now guys, yeah, right now, currently just going to finish the scav and just do my best to find weapons and just kind of loot as much as I can and regain. I actually like regaining in downtown a lot more than I used to. And the reason why for this is downtown usually has people kind of lurking around. It's like some easy fights inside of buildings that I prefer. And then on top of that too, like there's a lot of buildings that get missed on downtown while looting. So when you're trying to regain, downtown is actually probably an underrated spot that you would want to go if you're trying to regain and kind of get your feet back under you, like I was saying before, and get that loadout. So yeah, after this, I end up getting my, uh, I end up getting $7,300 but I'm still a little bit short. So I'm just going on like rooftops right now. I'm trying to figure out where the money is. I'm trying to loot. And here I actually end up hearing someone on the 18th floor. So now you can see how like, I'm kind of like, what's going on right here? And then I see a random guy just camping in a corner. We don't know what that guy was doing. I don't think he was on the same planet, but there I'm able to find an easy kill and then kind of keep it moving. And yeah, guys, we're still searching for money, you know, just ro roaming around downtown. But the one thing I guess I'd say to give you a tip here is when you're going around downtown, if you notice that I'm always staying inside of buildings and I'm not just running aimlessly through the streets, that is the one thing about downtown you never want to do is just run aimlessly through the streets because if you do, you will get beamed from a rooftop from somewhere you didn't even know existed. So always try and stay like close corners and close to things where like if someone does shoot at you, you can kind of dip into a building and regain, reheal, and then challenge. 
Yeah, you know, we're going to try the stoner. So this is like the first time I've used a stoner loadout. Uh, I have a little bit better of a loadout in general. But yeah, the stoner is kind of where I was going from there. And yeah. Okay, so earlier when I was uh, looting and getting my loadout, I remember there was a shot somewhere on the minimap, like towards this direction. So now that I have my loadout, you even hear me say it right here. I say, I think there was people here, if I remember correctly. I pop my UA, I mean, I pop my heartbeat. I see that he's near me somewhere. I see that there's going to be now an engagement, right? So I immediately back out of the courtyard because right here, a lot of people would just run through the open courtyard and get beamed from up top or down low. And now I'm going to try and play it a little bit more smart. And now remember, every fight that I take here, I'm going to be a little bit more passive because I'm waiting for another player. There's always going to be two people that I'm fighting, not just one. So these guys are end up, <clears throat> these guys end up fighting each other. And instead of me just running through the courtyard and taking a stupid fight, I go around. I hear that they're fighting each other. I see one down, one not. I get an easy wipe. And now... With him being downed, I know there's one more person somewhere around this area, so I can't play this too aggressive yet and go for all the loot because there's obviously one more guy around. But the smart play here, guys, is to back up and try and find the other team, but as well as trying to find the other team, the loadout just dropped again, right? And now in a solo duo, I cannot stress it enough. Being ghosted out is one of the most important things because the only thing you have in your favor in solo versus trio, solo versus squad, solo versus duos, or solos is having the element of surprise, right? So I now switch to my ghost loadout and now I have a chance where I can run up on people and they won't actually see me and I can get that first down and in a solo versus duo, if you get that first down, it is now a one-on-one -on -one, and that's kind of where I thrive in just a regular one-on-one -on -one gunfight and especially for you guys watching this, you guys are always going to want to have a one-on-one -on -one instead of a 1v2 where they both know where you are, where in this case, if you get one down, it would only be one person instead of two actually shooting at you. So now guys, I have completely disengaged i'm playing it smart i want to try and win i told my chat i was going to go for the win this is also for number 1000 so i'm playing a little bit smarter here and i grab a bounty i know at least one person is over here from fire on the bounty and i don't know if it's the same team that was over in this buy area before and they ran across and i happened to get them as a bounty or it's just two different teams so i'm kind of keeping an eye on the left right there out of the corner of my eye but i'm also going to try and get this bounty because having money in solo versus duos is very very important so yeah now that i know there's a bounty here and soon as it turns red for him he knows i'm here i see some dead bodies i see the guy throw a smoke and now i know there is at least one up here i throw a stun off the wall i kind of lose him for a second i don't know where he goes i see the car on the mini map so now i know i have to position myself kind of away from the car for a second I'm trying to find him. I hear him right there. Easy kill. That's a nice easy bounty. I got some cash under myself now. I have $17,000. This is where I was talking about the momentum in the beginning of the game. Now I have the momentum again. Now, of course, there's only 64 left, but I have money now. I can get a self revive. I can get UAVs. I see people now stadium. And now this is kind of where the fights start to happen, where I can use this stoner, try and get those first bloods and play a little bit faster. So here you take into account that I see this one person stadium and I go for the down. I get a pre pretty easy down here because the, do uh, the stoner is really, really good. And I see the glare of the sniper right on the screen right here. He cracks me. And now if he cracks me, usually that immediately tells me he might be a pretty good sniper. So I'm in solo versus duos again. And of course, if you get third partied, it's going to be two people too. So you don't want to just run through the open field that that down because he probably has self revive. So I'm going to try and get some height advantage and see if I can get another down before I make a play. And even if I do make a play here, I can always fly from the top fire, which makes my life a little bit easier. Now here too, I go up there and I know there's a team stadium, but I also catch a team with the height advantage that I just decided to take. Uh, there's a team open in the field that they were fighting the people in stadium. And now I know that I have a pretty good opportunity to get one kill, if not more. So I'm trying to use the mounting feature and down them with the stoner. I'm not really used to the recoil on the stoner right now. So I'm kind of warming up, but I'm in a really good spot here to get all these kills. And then here I get this kill, the guy that I downed in stadium. So now I know the guy in stadium actually only has one person, the guy on the right sniping. So he's in a one, now I'm in a one-on-one -on -one with him. And the team that ran to the left, there's two. I don't think that guy knew what planet he was on either, guys. He was just, you know, we're going to, there was no analyzation to that at all. But yeah, I kill that guy. And now I know that there's still people across by the, by the tents. I'm getting shot at by the buy station from earlier in the game. So now I'm just trying to kind of go back and forth and trying to thin the squad is what I like to call it. So there's two people in the duos. I always try and get like one full kill and then hold my position before I make a full push. I end up getting away and the people behind me kind of forced me to go one way. So I push towards the stadium and now I'm looking for people to find. I know the stadium team's still around here or the people that came from the tents went to stadium. So I pushed that way. And then here, guys, this is something where I kind of get lucky. A guy comes up the staircase. I'm reloading. I slide to the left. I avoid a sniper. I have the MAC-10. I get one. I kill the second guy. And that's kind of 
that's really it. The only thing I would say is I get lucky he had a sniper out, but if you notice, I slide to the left behind cover to avoid his shots, even if he had an assault rifle. But if that guy was probably a better player, I most likely should be dead. So I kind of get lucky here in the sense that that guy's not the best player. Then after that fight, I rotate the top stadium and I'm the reason, <clears throat> the reason why I rotate the top stadium is so that I can actually use that flying feature right there to kind of get over towards a different building of cover without having to run through an entire open field because I knew there was one team by the tents and I'm not sure if that was the team that I just killed at stadium. I don't really know. So I want to get there as fast as I can without, you know, being kind of caught in the middle of a field with no cover. And that's exactly kind of why I'm playing like this. And now I'm wrapping up to the right and I'm hugging the zone because I want to make sure there's no one on my right where I can get shot in the back. And on top of that, I want to try and have the element of surprise in duos, right? So as I'm trying to play aggressive and find people, I also have to remember that I'm trying to make sure that people might forget about me being behind them in the zone. And usually buy stations, as you can see, I'm rotating to a buy station. I have a lot of money, but also usually have people at them. And yeah, so just like I said, there are people at the buy stations. You're going to see here, I turn into the corner and there's a guy using the buy station. So I catch a guy using the buy station. You can see that he uses the buy. The red flare goes up. I use all this time to buy what I need to buy. I know that there's a guy above me now because the guy that you, <clears throat> the guy just used that. I'm going to see if I can pick them out of the air, but probably not. And now I'm just going to try and call on UAVs. And you're going to see right here, this is the biggest part of the game for me. So right here, I see that I use a triple, triple UAV, which is an advanced UAV. Now I know from this exact screen, majority of the map is all center circle, right? All center circle and left side of the map. There's one guy floating in the air, a couple people south of me and a very few north. So now I know that's not too many people around me. Maybe there's a team ghosted, but most likely not too many people around me. And I have to get back into the action over by the airport and focus bottom left, like southwest or southeast of the map. And that's kind of where I'm going to get most of my kills if I go that way. So I leave that ping there. And now it's my time to kind of rotate and try and get into the action. So if I can get to one of those hangars or those buildings, I can get into a good position where if I find people, I can get that first pick, kind of catch them by surprise and then be in a fair one on one, which makes my life much easier. So here we are rotating around, you know, taking the car. We're going to rotate straight to my ping. I know that there's a lot of people on this side of the map, so I'm going to take a building and now I'm going to start looking for easy picks. So right here, I'm going, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm making noise with the car. People see me. I see a guy right here. I'm like, oh no, I back up. He makes me really, really weak. And now this is where I got to start playing smart, right? I have a person that can obviously hit their shots decent enough that they're going to crack my armor. And I know that there's a lot of people around me, so I can't get too aggressive and run through an open field. So I'm going to try and start downing people, use my airstrike and do all of this where I can constantly down them. But this is the big play. This is the big mistake right here. So I down this first guy and now I'm expecting the guy to hopefully go for it. And I get too aggressive. So right here, instead of running out there like kind of an idiot, what I should have done is I should down this guy right here. I should go to the right. And now right on this corner, I should shoulder and make sure that guy is not peeking and give him like an extra second or two before I decide to push them. But instead, because I have dead silence here, I have it ready. I'm ready to go. But instead, I get too over aggressive. I get shot and then put down. And now if this guy knew that I was solo, he should push me. But he thinks I have a teammate. So he's probably waiting while his teammates down. I should have definitely thrown a shoulder there to make sure that it was actually the right time to push. So once again, I regain, I heal up, I get another down. And now this is where in my moment I can use this airstrike for my advantage. If I pop this airstrike, now I know for a fact he can't peek. And once I know that, this is where I'm going to make my move to get into the other building. So I have a better angle on this exact team. Because now I know by the time I get there, they're going to get their res. And then it's probably going to be a situation where this guy now has two teammates again. So I'm going to play it one more time for a down and then hopefully a finish and then a full kill and go from there. This team ends up actually playing it pretty well, I would say. They're kind of just holding this building and they're constantly making me peek them. And they have two people and I have one. They don't know that. But I'm just trying to get that one intro pick. If I can get that one intro pick, that's going to help me out so much. So I'm kind of just tr trying to figure out the best way to approach these guys while also looking on the other sides of the map to make sure no one else is just running around. I see this guy over here. They're hitting pretty good shots. I don't want to over challenge. I don't have self anymore, right? So I'm doing my best here to just try and get this opening pick for myself just to kind of get in there. But they're doing a really good job of throwing shoulders and not over peeking and giving me that down, even though they've done it twice already. So then, yeah, here, guys, I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm actually going to get shot at from a different direction, which gives me info that I remember on the advanced UAV. There's a lot of people here, right? It gives me info now that there's a sniper on that green building right there that you just saw on my screen. If you back it up and check it again. So I have to make sure I cannot peek from the top but I do have dead silence. And this is probably where I'm going to have to make a move to kill these guys, or I'm going to have to disengage one of the two, because if I don't, it's going to be a very, very hard win for myself. So instead of fighting the team up top, and then also have to worry about the other team in green sniping me. And if that's a good sniper, I'm probably dead. 
I disengage here and you can see on the map that the circle is in my favor, right? So the people on this side, which would be over here, have to rotate in. The people all the way on green, which are over here, have to come from all the way here and rotate in too. So in a solo duo situation, patience is your best friend. And of course, sometimes it's not that fun to play like that, but I'm going for my 1,000th win. And also I'm trying to take this a little more serious to show you guys on YouTube how you can win solo versus duos and not just drop bombs because dropping bombs is a little bit of a you know running at everybody and also world starring people which i've done before in plenty of my gameplays but this is more of like a serious one for you so i disengage and now i'm just trying to get like a rooftop or a window where they have to come towards me and it makes my job easier where like i can get a little bit easier kills in a solo versus duo i also noticed that there's cars over here by the buy station and if there's cars by this buy station, there's probably someone over there or at least one or two, maybe more teams there. So I'm just trying to get all my info here that I see someone land there. I know there's two teams on the edge that they're going to rotate late. I'm just getting all the info that I possibly can just to make sure that there's 26 people left. And I know where majority of the people around me are. Now, guys, that the circle is now getting closer to me. I come back to the window to make sure that team that are probably holding the building, if they're holding a building like that, they're probably going to rotate late too. They didn't seem like the most aggressive players, right? So I'm going to say like, whoop, there you go. I get an easy pick. Now I know that I'm probably in a one-on-one -on -one for this like actual fight, which is the element of surprise. I waited. I used my patience here. I have the element of surprise. I get one, I get two, and now I'm in a really good spot where I killed probably the only team on that side. Maybe the other team is still late rotating, so I'm going to check it out. But other than that, I'm in a good spot. So here, I'm making sure that other team didn't ra randomly late rotate. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no one on my backside because if there is then i'm gonna have to fight him i see that guy going for that loot now here guys i'm out of plates and i see that one guy going for my loot i don't know where the second one is but you always assume that there's a full team so here i'm trying to get my info again i put some bullets into him but i do have stun grenades so i'm able to push him with the dead silence i throw a stun and i'm able to just use my dead silence and my nades and my tacticals push this guy i kind of have him on his heels he chose to challenge me easy kill and right there i have this entire side of the map in my favor i can loot the plates and i can kind of get back in action so now while rotating, I'm just constantly trying to, you know, use my heartbeat and do my best to push up the map. I see cars over here right on the map. So in my mind, I think there could definitely be a random person on that wall. So don't run through this airfield is my, my mind. I have to make sure that there's no one on that buy, make sure there's no one on my left side. So I'm kind of trying to just find info of where another team could be before I make a crazy push. I don't see anything. I go immediately to a tight corner where I could finesse and go back and forth on the sandbags. I see that car there still. So I'm still like, I don't know. Could he be there? Could he not? I'm just trying to see if I can get any visual info. And then here, you guys are going to see I backed it up for a second. You're going to see the flare go up from the buy station right here. And then as soon as I see that, I now know that there was one person there. He's going to try and fly in, probably go for the loadout. And I'm going to try and go for the kill right here. I get that guy down with the stoner. Still shaky shots for the most part. I'm still worrying about the recoil. I haven't used the stoner really much in this video yet. I get that one person over there. I'm trying to see if anyone crosses. I see a head right there crossing to him. And now it looks like there's two teams because that's three different people. I now know that this is probably my moment in solo duos, solo squads, or solo trios. If you see a team fighting, most likely they're going to be weak. Most likely they're going to be down a player or something. That is when you have to make your move. I see these two teams fighting and that's when I'm like, all right, this is my time. I got to go fight. Make sure I can try and find a weak person use my headset to hear their he uh, uh, sounds. I see this guy running away, easy kill. And now I'm in a good spot again. So then here guys, I just get my loadout. I think I use this loadout to get an extra stun because it helps out. I'm pretty sure I picked up a heartbeat. I don't know if I had ghost there or not, but I have an extra stun. And right here, you can see that this strip is something I do not want to rotate through on foot. If a good team is over here, I'm dead. I have no chance of going through it. So I'm going to use this car regardless if it's hurt. And I just want to get all the way to the, the things in the airfield that will give me cover. So I have places to finesse and also not get caught in the airfield. I use this car. I get right to the places of cover. And now I'm in a good spot where now there's only six people left in this game. I have 14 kills. I know there's a person right here because of the buy station being used, the res right there. I see people over here to my left. So now I know where probably majority of the map is. I see these people running right. I'm trying to use the stone to get the picks. These are kind of hard shots with this specific class. The loadout that I'm going to provide for you makes those shots a little bit easier, in my opinion. I'm using the stoner, and now I know that there's a team of two over here. Now let's count the kills here. A team of two over here and me, that's three people. So there's two other people left, and that's it. So it's a 2v2v1. I'm the one. 
So I know the team of two is over here. And then I saw the buy station over here, right? So that's probably the team of two on that side across the lake. Right here is where the crazy ending is going to go out. So I'm just going to analyze this and I'm going to let you guys watch this one. I'm going to turn the volume up. But basically, guys, this was I knew two teams are over here or two people are over here and two people are on the left side of the map, right? These guys throw 85 airstrikes at me, cluster strikes and everything. So now I'm just going back and forth to kind of, you know, avoid these airstrikes, use these as cover and know that there's going to be someone on my right. So I'm going to try and kill someone as fast as I can. I'll analyze one other play that I think was a good one. But yeah, you guys can just watch this one out. So there's two people over here. The 1v2v2, bro. They just keep precisioning me and it's fucking mean. Oh my god, this is so fucking rude. Fuck you. So right here, as you know, if you back it up really quick before we go farther, right here when I get precision airstrike, you see it pop up on here. So I know the team behind me airstrike me, and then you can see that it's close to the ridge line, right? So I know that as soon as that precision airstrike gets called, it's like, I got to kill this guy in, in front of me and heal up and challenge the guys behind me. Because if I stand here any longer, I'll die to the precision. But if I stand here any longer with my back facing them, they're going to shoot me in the back. So here is where I start playing a little bit more smart. I run immediately at this person. I have the stun grenade that you see. This makes it kind of an easy kill for me. I throw my stun. I go left. I make a thing. I'm, <clears throat> I make them think I'm going left. And then here is where I know they're going to be on the ridge line that I just showed you, right? I have a stoner, which is not that good for headshots in the sense of like those like head glitches. And I have a MAC-10 at that range is not going to work. So I see he drops a sniper. So now in my mind, I think if I can pick up this sniper, get a kill, and then after drop the sniper, pick up my AR again, and then fight the guy one-on-one, -on -one, the other teammate that's probably running at me. Let's be real. They're in a one-on-two. They're probably going to get cocky. That guy running at me, I can down kill him. The other guy self revives, and then I can have a one-on-one -on -one fair and square. That guy probably doesn't have plates. I have stuns, grenades, and I win the game. So that's my thought process. Now I'm going to let the rest of it play out for you. Oh my gosh, GG. That was crazy. That was just mean. I just got so many streaks called on me at once. That was for my 1,000th win. So yeah, that is how it comes to an end. So right there, I throw that snipe. I'm able to get the opening pick because I figured he would be on like a head glitch of some sort of cover. That was the only gun that was going to give me that ability to kill that guy. And then after that, I drop a munitions box to get my tacticals back that I picked up off the guy. That made it a lot easier. I'm able to get my stuns back and secure the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know you guys really liked the how to win more solos when I kind of analyzed that one. And that solo that I analyzed was a 26. I could make another basic one that it helps you gotta just win solos in general i can also go for really high kill ones and solo duos and more too to kind of give you even more advanced tips but this video was more dedicated to this people that want to see how to play versus 1v2s and also guys if you take tips from this video it can help you win more solos and squads and stuff too this is just more of a positioning and rotation and what i'm thinking and i know you guys like the last video a lot so i hope you enjoyed this video once again please subscribe to the channel if you do i've been doing a lot of content like this giveaways and so much more i appreciate all the support the views on the videos have been so high recently i can't explain enough how grateful I am for all of you guys watching my videos. Thank you again, and I hope you guys have a great night. I'll see you guys next video. Later, guys.